Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of Swift Key Keyboard and Emojis. It is a keyboard replacement. So you may not realize it, or maybe you do, as a Android phone user, well, Android and now iOS phone user, you have the option to change out the default keyboard that came with your smartphone. And Swift Key is one of the older and better known uh, keyboard replacement apps. I've been wanting to do this app for quite a while. However, originally it was a pay app and if you've seen any of my other app reviews, you kind of know I try and shy away from paid apps because I like the free ones. Well, recently SwiftKey has moved to a in-app purchase model. So you pay for certain aspects of it, but it, it in no way, shape, or form has anything to do with the core functionality of the app. Um, it's mainly for themes and things like that, which I'll show you a little later. Now, the app itself, as you see on my home screen here, doesn't actually take you to the app, it takes you to the settings of the app, and that's partially because the app is a keyboard. So the best way to actually see the app is to go into anything that requires a keyboard. In this case, I'm going to use the default messenger app on my phone, just because I'm trying to avoid uh, personal data. This is what SwiftKey looks like on my phone. On your phone, it can look different. That's because SwiftKey is extraordinarily customizable. You'll notice that I have a particular color scheme as well as the number row across the top there. That is something that I set up for my phone. You will also notice that if I switch the phone, the keyboard looks different yet again. Now, this is another option which we're going to discuss in a moment, but this just gives you a general idea of the customizability of SwiftKey. Now, customizability is not the only thing that this keyboard offers. It also offers prediction text, which is a nice feature. So this is gonna be kind of hard because I'm doing it around the camera and tripod and a wired mic and one-handed. So bear with me if this is not the fastest you've ever seen somebody typing. Uh, Now, you'll notice that I did do some of the predictive text because it was what I was going to type out. Now, it did stop with Swift. I was thinking Swift key, so if I tap the backspace there, you'll notice that it knows I want to do Swift key. The predictive text of Swift key is very good. There is a language pack that you download when you first install it. There are a plethora of languages to choose from. Uh, in this case, I'm using English US. The prediction was actually one of the things that kind of, I don't want to say annoyed me, but threw me off originally when I downloaded the app. Partially because I was used to using a Google keyboard, which is another aftermarket keyboard predictive text thing. I felt the Swift key prediction was a little too aggressive for my taste and was predicting words that I did not want. Now, again, in the settings, there's a way that we can actually have SwiftKey learn from your other types of interactions using a keyboard via email, Twitter, etc. I'll show you that a little later. Um, so yeah, that, that's just a generalization of what the uh, keyboard functionality looks like. There is also what they call flow, which is, I've never been good at this, so... As you can see, not very good at that particular part. Um, try that again. There we go. It's an option. You also have the option for voice enabled. Hello world, this is a test of Swift key. And done. So all of that functionality is baked into the keyboard itself. So let's talk about what I was speaking about before, which is the customizability. Now you can get to the customizing using the app or widget that you would have on your screen or from the keyboard itself, if we look 
down here in the lower left hand corner where the number pad is. Push and hold and that will bring you to a quick swift key settings menu. Here you have several choices. You can undock the keyboard and move it wherever you like. Now, this functionality on my smaller screen, not so useful, but SwiftKey is also compatible with tablets. So if you have SwiftKey on your tablet, moving that around and undocking it is very useful. Now we're gonna push and hold again, and you'll notice at the bottom here, I have the full keyboard currently active. What you saw when I turned my phone to horizontal was the split, so you can have right thumb and left thumb. Again, because I'm working around a tripod, you're not gonna fully appreciate that because I have to hold the phone in place. Again, smaller phone, not as useful. Horizontal mode, excellent. Using a tablet, even better. Now, what I should probably be using is compact mode, which will allow you to one finger type on the keyboard. So this is another awesome option. You can also move by pushing and holding the arrows to the right or left. Uh, I'm gonna put it back to my full keyboard because that's how I like my keyboard. You'll also notice that you have an option for resizing. What this is, it will resize the keys in the background. I have it mid-range because I have, well, little smaller hands, but I'm used to working with a keyboard of that size. But you can also make the keyboard bigger. You see it popping up in the background there. Or you can make it very, very small if you want compact for more real estate for other things. We're gonna put that back to normal size. You'll also notice that it is called Swift Key Keyboard and Emoji. Part of that is because in my case, I have it for long pressing the enter key. There are tons of emojis that you can choose from if that's your thing. Not particularly what I use when typing, so not something that I would normally use. However, you do also get emoji prediction with this keyboard, which is really nice if you like emojis. I'm gonna go back into the settings and bring you to one of the aspects of this that I enjoy greatly. It is the themes. Now you'll notice that I do have downloaded ones. They are from the SwiftKey store, but they were free. Didn't pay for them, they, they had a sale, so I went in there and I grabbed something. You'll notice that you have tons of free options to fit any flavor or design phone you have. You also, if we go to the SwiftKey store, you will have to use a, I'm sorry, you will have to create a SwiftKey account, but you can just, you know, do that. It doesn't charge you anything. If you do make a purchase, you will have to set up a credit card later. But uh, they're reasonable. They're like 99 cents for a theme and they have a very, very large selection. Now it's 99 cents per single theme or you can go over to the packs and they bundle a couple together for a little more. Uh, but that's just, again, part of what makes SwiftKey great. We'll go into the settings here. And from here, you can also access the themes as I did before. Uh, SwiftKey Cloud, this is part of what I was referring to with having to create an account with SwiftKey. The SwiftKey Cloud is also a way that you can have SwiftKey on multiple devices and it pools your SwiftKey information. So it's a predictive learning keyboard. As you type, the more you use it, the more it learns, the better it gets. If you have the cloud, if you have SwiftKey on multiple devices, it pools all that information together to make every keyboard better. Or in my case, where I had to uh, reformat my phone here, all of that learned texting was saved in the cloud. And when I reinstalled SwiftKey, reattached this phone to the cloud. It uh, automatically picked up from where I left off and I didn't have to go through uh, the reteaching process of SwiftKey. So that's what the personal cloud is. Language, as I said, it has, it's got a plethora of languages to choose from that you can put on the phone. Again, the customized layout is what we were doing before. Uh, this is just a more in-depth look at it where you can change arrow position, accented characters, uh, you know, number pad on left. I have the number row acro across the top because that's how I like. And enter key uh, always for the long or long press for the emojis. Sound and vibration. Again, this is just quickly going through the settings. Input method, that's the predictive keyboard itself. The swipe method, which I showed you. And the text to speech. Advanced settings and text correct. So you can come in here and Again, it's advanced settings if you want to do that. I'm not going to bring you through all that because I'm trying to keep this 
reasonably short. Usage stats is actually kind of interesting in my opinion because I like data. So it, it shows you, you know, your efficiencies and what you've corrected and how many times you've used it to complete words. This is my typing heat map. Now this is one of the interesting features about this keyboard. Um, it actually allows you to see this. I'm not sure if the Google keyboard does this only because like I said, they don't let you have access to this. It starts off with all of these keys being a perfect circle. And as you use SwiftKey, it learns your particular typing patterns. So you can see on the C key down here, I very rarely push the C key actually in the middle or the V or the B or the N. That's probably because I have small fingers and just quickly tap it. So what it does is it learns your particular even placement of where you touch the keyboard and helps change how the keyboard recognizes your presses to increase your speed of typing. With all of that said, and you can tell I, I do like SwiftKey. I've been waiting for it to go free. I was actually debating paying money for it. I was willing to pay money for it. Uh, they did have a, a trial one that you could do, but I, I was going to put down money on it. They have made the predictive text a little less aggressive, which I like. Like I said before, that was kind of annoying. One downfall I would say is it does take up a bit more space than another, you know, my Google predictive keyboard. Uh, Google takes about 20 megabytes. This one has 45 megabytes uh, of used data. Now, part of that is because of all the themes you have, of all the language packs that you can download and any other customization, personalization that you do to it. Now, one of the other items that annoys me a little bit, but it seems that it gets better with every revision that they do, and it could just be because of my hardware, when I leave SwiftKey, SwiftKey stays there for a little longer than I would like it to. And depending on which app I'm using the keyboard in is how long it, see that time it didn't stay as long. So again, it could just be my hardware, but there are occasions where the SwiftKey keyboard stays there a little longer. Now we'll delete all of this and show you one last time. And I fail at swiping again. There you go. One last example and one last example of it not wanting to cooperate, leaving the keyboard up there. Like I said, it could just be my, my phone, it's getting on in years, or it could just be every iteration they come out with is just that much better. So this has been my review of SwiftKey keyboard and emojis. Uh, located in the Google Play Store. I will link to that below. Also available on iOS now. I don't have an iOS device, so sorry guys, you'll have to find that on your own. It's a good keyboard to use. I highly suggest you uh, get rid of whatever stock keyboard came with your phone and give this a try. It's free, you, you, you can't beat free. Give it a try. So again, I have been Wander001. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the area below, and thanks for watching.